Welcome design students. In this video, we're going to experiment with the properties of color and RGB numbers to create a color wheel design. So let's get started. Open up Adobe Illustrator and create a new document. Make sure you're working with the web settings. And what this does is it automatically changes our color mode to RGB from CMYK. Remember, we've already talked about these two color systems and create a 1,000 by 1,000 pixel document. Make sure you're working in the Essentials Classic workspace by coming over here to the top right hand corner and changing this to Essentials Classic. Now the first thing we're going to do is create a new layer in the Layers window. I'm going to name this layer Background. And then we're going to select that layer and create a background layer. Use your shape tool, your rectangular shape tool, and click and drag a rectangle that covers the entire artboard. And then fill it with a color maybe not quite black, maybe almost black. And then you can take the stroke away. Once we've done that, we're going to lock that layer in the Layers panel, and then we're going to select the layer above it. Now we can create our color wheel design. So to start with, we're going to create what's called a polar grid. And the polar grid tool is in your toolbar underneath the line tool right here. You have to click and hold to access these tools. Find the center of your document. You can use Smart Snaps to do that. It's on by default. And then hold down Shift and click and drag and hold down Alt at the same time and you'll create from the center. Now notice that this polar grid has one, two, three, four, five dividers this way and then one, two, three, four, five, or one, two, three, four, five, what are called concentric dividers. Then I want you to click Command Z to undo that creation and make sure you have the polar grid tool selected and just simply click in the center of your page. And here is where we're going to change these settings to make sure that we have the right number of divisions to do what we want to do. All right, so we need to change these settings here. So we're going to start with um, 8 here. And you can push Tab to go to the next setting. And 12 here. So we want 8 concentric dividers, or 8 circles. And then we want 12 radial dividers, or uh, vertical dividers. So we're going to click OK. And that will create a polar grid the same size as the last one we created. Now we need to center this in our page. So what I want you to do is select it and then find the alignment tools up here at the top of your uh, application window. And I want you to click the vertical one and the horizontal one. And that centers it on your page. And then with the polar grid selected, I want you to hover over the corner of the selection box and rotate it so that the slices face up like this instead of the lines facing up. And now let's begin to color this. To color this, we need to be able to color each block. Right now, if we try to color it, we'll just color the whole thing. So we're going to use something called the Live Paint Tool. To find the Live Paint Tool, you need to come over here to your toolbar and find the Shape Builder Tool, click and hold it, and there's the Live Paint Tool. But before we can paint this, notice it doesn't do anything, we need to get our Select Tool, make sure this is selected, and we need to create a Live Paint Group from this grid. So to do that, select it, go to Object, Live Paint, 
make. And now when we select the lav paint tool, we can click and color any one of these squares. So now we're going to use the color picker to color the squares. So let's double click the color, the fill color picker, the one that is not an outline, this one. And let's start with zero degrees. Make sure H is selected here so your color picker looks like this. I'm going to start with zero degrees, 100% saturation, and 100% brightness. And that'll give us a nice bright red. Then click OK. And where we want to color is right here. Right here. Red. And then we're going to open the color picker again. And we're going to type in, in the hue slot, we're going to type in 30 degrees and click OK. That will give us orange. So what we're doing, each time we add 30 degrees to the hue, we're just moving in degrees around the color wheel. The next one would be 60. And the next one would be 90. And then 120. And just like that. Keep adding 30 degrees each time. You should have something that looks like this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take each color and we're going to decrease its brightness going out this way and then we're going to increase its saturation or decrease its saturation going into the center. So I'm going to start with red. Remember red was zero degrees and then I'm going to tab down to the brightness and I'm going to make that 75% and I'm going to click there. Double click it again. We're going to make this 50%. We're decreasing it 25% each time. And the final one, of course, would be zero, which would be black. But it's already black. But I'm going to go ahead and make it black anyway. And then we'll open this back up and we'll make this 100% now. And then this one is going to be 75%. So we're going to decrease the saturation 75% each time. And every time we do that, we're adding a little more white to the color. And then, of course, a color with zero saturation and 100% brightness would be white. And we can go ahead and make all of these white because they will all be white. And then we would do orange. Remember orange was 30 degrees. One hundred percent brightness and seventy five percent I mean one hundred percent saturation and seventy five percent brightness. And you just keep going around like this with each color. And I'll give you some time to do that. And when you're done, you should have something that looks like this. Now if I deselect this, if I get 
get my select tool and deselect this, you shouldn't see any lines here. If you see something that looks like this, then you have stroke turned on on your grid and you need to turn that off. Like so. Now I want you to put title text and your name, the class, and the date down here in the lower right hand corner. So we need to make a little room here for the title. So I'm going to grab the corner of my grid here on my selection box. I'm going to hold down Shift and Alt at the same time so I can scale from the middle. And then I want you to put a title right here. Remember to use title text. You click the text tool and you click once. And then you will type in color properties. The text is black, we can't see it, so we're going to change it to white using the swatches. And then we're going to scale it up, holding down Shift and Alt. Now I want you to find a good font. So to find a good font, move your canvas or your artboard over a little bit using the middle mouse button like so. Push down on the middle mouse wheel, move it and then pull down the font list and if you have your text selected you can find a good font. Pick one other than the default font. Once you've found it, then select it and use the alignment tool to center it on your composition. You could also create another title here just by clicking and type in hue, saturation, and brightness. And then change it to white. And put that maybe here. And then down here, I want you to type your name the class and the date. And I want you to put it in the lower right hand corner. And when you're finished with this, to export it as a JPEG, you go to File, Export, Export As. And that should bring up your um, finder window here. You can either select, I want you to select uh, JPEG, name this, and then save it to your desktop. Click Use Artboards All and click Export. And then click OK. And when you're done, you should have a JPEG of your composition that looks like, oops, that looks like that. And this is what you, this is what you would upload to Canvas. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you enjoyed experimenting and getting to know the color picker and color properties in Illustrator and I'll see you in the next video.